Our next guest is a very talented actress you know from The Good Place, House of Lies, and Veronica Mars. She both produces and stars in Nobody Wants This, which begins streaming on Netflix this Thursday. Let's take a look. Rebecca and I were never going to work. We just didn't fit, and yet everyone said we did, so, you know, we stayed in it. Rebecca sounds really pretty. Like a chestnut brunette, perfect teeth, thick hair. I have really thin hair, just so you know. It's I fine. So. I mean, there's a lot of it, but it's very fine. She has thick hair, doesn't she? It's pretty thick. I knew it. I've lost my watch in it before. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> what, what now? Well, I don't know. I mean, as established, I'm definitely very fresh off of a long-term relationship. Plus, you and I come from such different worlds that be very hard to pull off. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Mm -hmm. You can't friend zone me, right? Because I already friend zoned you. Oh, oh 100%. Just to be I am just agreeing that that's likely the best okay, call. Okay, well, it's still kind of rude. Please don't steal my thunder. Understood. Please welcome back to the show my friend Kristen Bell, everybody! <laughs> welcome back! Thank you. I was thinking about uh, how remarkable tonight is that I've all the guests on the show tonight I have known since 2001. I met uh, Harper in 2001, Will in 2001, and you in 2001. Really? Yeah. And you know what? I I had never met Harper before tonight, but I'm so excited to see that movie. I can't Fantastic. even tell you. The trailer is just, it's overwhelmingly beautiful. But I met Will in 2001 as well, and um, I would like to tell you why he's the nicest man on the planet, which I'm sure you already know. He would never ever remember this, but so my best friend from college is your wife's sister. Are we following? Yeah. Okay. So Ariel had an internship at SNL. So we were 18 and like, this is it. We snuck in every weekend, we watched every show, and I was at that point 18, looking like 12, <laughs> wandering around the hallways. People were like, who's the child? And at one after party one night, I snuck in also, sorry SNL, my best friend from home, Bob, and Bob goes, God, I really want to meet Will Ferrell. And I, dad, I didn't know Will Ferrell, but I was like, I'll introduce you to Will Ferrell. <laughs> no problem. Born with Moxie. So I went up to Will and I was like, w just acted the part. I was like, Will, this is my best friend from high school, Bob. And Will goes, Bob, so nice to meet you. And this one, oh, oh, you. And he did not throw me under the bus and say, I have no idea who you are, child. He just went with it. He was the most gracious. I remember it to this day. Well, it's pretty special. He's the nicest He's person. He's a special guy. He's a really He's special guy. He's earned the reputation. Yeah. This is a, a very, I know you had a busy week. You came to New York City. Yeah. And uh, your oldest daughter. I brought my oldest daughter for and, her first weekend of Broadway shows. And how many did you knock out in a weekend? Well, we bought tickets to four. We ended up going to three. We got a little tired on Sunday night. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Four in a weekend is a lot. Oh, we were raging. We were yeah. like just running from theater to theater. And did she pick the four or did? She picked all four. Okay, That's gotcha. what you got to do when the, it's the kids' first yeah. weekend, I and think. And how did yeah. it, did everything land? Everything landed. We went to see Gatsby, Six, uh, MJ, and then we did skip Wicked because we got too tired. But we, the whole weekend was beautiful. We spent it just like singing to each other. Because here's the thing. She has been bitten by the musical theater bug, as I was at a very young age. Did you, uh, were you the one who bit her? Or do you think she found, <laughs> like, do you think she would have found it without having a mom who was also bit? I think she would have. Okay, got it. I think she would have. You either gravitate towards that or you don't. Now, I live with two people, my other daughter and my husband, who are definitely not musical theater people. So we're constantly playing, like, you know, the Miss Saigon soundtrack, and my other daughter and Dax are like, turn it off, we're not dorks, you know? So we were really happy to get away and just, like, be free in the musical theater community. You, uh, so your first, was, was Reefer Madness your, the first big stage show for you? No, that, well, I had done, uh... Crucible? Crucible was at after Reefer Madness. Okay. I did Tom Sawyer, which was ill-fated. It only ran for about three months. Okay. And then Reefer Madness was really special. It was and really that special. That was 2001, and then 2005, you did a, 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 a Showtime, Showtime movie of it, yeah. And now uh, it's a revival. Yeah, I'm producing it in Los Angeles, bring a little theater back to Los Angeles. And I will say, like, this show is so special to me because I can see it as the, the actual turning point in my career. When I did the show, we were in tech on September 11th. 
So the cast and crew got very close very quick and bonded, but we also didn't really survive more than a couple months. But that whole cast and crew was from LA and they were like, hey, you should move to LA. And I was like, I'm 20, I don't know how to do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> and they said, come out, we'll be your family. I lived on the writer's couch for three months. Like they really took care of me and I can see it as the fork in this road. I would not have a career. I would not have met my husband. I would not have had my kids if it weren't for like the loving embrace of these hooligans. And so, and is, there you are. There you go. Like it's a crazy show. It's okay? a crazy show. But spoiler is, alert. It's really funny to watch you uh, crossing your eyes while you take a drag. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's, it's so it's there was a 1936 propaganda film by the government which was really embarrassing called Reefer Madness that stoners have watched forever. And they these writers wrote it into a satirical musical. But spoiler alert, it's not really about weed. It's about misinformation <laughs> uh, and challenging authority. So we thought this was the perfect year to revive it. And I've yet to meet a younger generation that doesn't fall in love with it because younger generations are interested in challenging authority. And they have good taste. And they've got great taste. They have great taste. Um, uh, Nobody Wants This. Yeah. Fantastic new show written by Aaron Foster, who's yes. a very funny person. Very. What was, your, uh, what was your gravitational pull towards this? You know, I hadn't worked in a while. I. God, I'd love to tell you I have it like all mapped out, but I don't. I'm just like, I have no idea what I want to do next. Like maybe take a nap. But it came across, across my desk and I thought, oh, this is so thoughtful and funny and edgy and really shows this like, this modern side of dating with like apps and cultural differences and like your family's getting involved. And it just was, it felt very fresh. And I hadn't read a rom-com that felt this fresh in a very long time. How, it's you and Adam Brody. Uh-huh. How old do you feel uh, your characters are in uh, the show? Because <laughs> I enjoyed, like, watching it. Yeah, not, yeah. Like, sometimes you're watching a rom-com, and yeah. I, I, re I am a man of a certain age. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> I'm like, this isn't for me anymore. And well, this, I felt like a connection to the character. That, I think, is part of Aaron Foster's brilliance, because usually you're used to seeing, like, hot 21-year-olds, like, meet and then have a, a miscommunication, and then there's, like, a bow at the end. This show is not that. Adam and I discussed a lot how old we were. We were always like, how old are we supposed to be? You kind of got to know. We decided we're 30, 12. 30, 12? Yes. <laughs> That's a great, because I feel like 30, 12-year-olds are underrepresented. They really are, but you can watch them fall in love and nobody wants this. <laughs> you guys are the right 30, 12-year-olds to Thank watch fall in love. Much. I enjoyed Thank it you. very much. Thank you. Um, uh, Dax was here recently, so I feel like I'm pretty caught up to date on the family, but I haven't, that was before everybody was back to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it nice to have uh, the girls back in oh, school? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it the best feeling Oh, in the my world? God, it really is. Like, when, some, when, when August rolls around, it's just, you're really just watching the clock and twiddling your your thumbs, but then you're also gonna deal with like a swing of, you know, nervousness for them to go back to school. I mean, you got, I know you have two boys and a girl, yeah? yeah. I don't know how boys are, but like, it has just been a real life lesson for me to realize that I cannot save my adolescent girls from, you know, five of the seven days a week, one of them standing in the mirror, screaming that she can't leave the house, she's just too ugly. And, and then I'm just there like, wow, you really can't save anyone from their hormones. It's just gonna happen no matter what. There's not, it's true, you do, it's, a, it's funny how much you realize you wanna help these kids more than anything, and then there's this huge chunk of it that you're just completely helping. You gotta let them go through it. And so we say, we say when you look in the mirror, you gotta just be a little bit better than the person you were yesterday. That's pretty we good. We say that. Well, that's what I say, and Dax takes it down a, a very different road. Okay. Has he told you what he says to no, them? No, what does he say? Well, so, like, we're, our, like, religion is Lizzo, and um, <laughs> there was one, <laughs> there was one particular morning where one of my daughters was like, I cannot do today. I'm done. And it was, like, 7 a.m., and he said, I want you to stand in that mirror and repeat after me. And she said, okay. And he said, say, I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> she said, I'm a bad bitch, and I'm gonna this day up. And she did it, and it helped. And it's kind of like our family mantra now. That's so good. And then on the way out the door, you're like, don't say that at school. And just don't say it at school, sweetie. Just don't say it at school. Um, congratulations on the show. I'm so excited about Reefer Madness as well. It's just a delight to see you. Kristen Bell, everyone. Nobody wants this. Begin streaming this Thursday on Netflix. For more information on Reefer Madness, go to ReeferMadness.com. Stick around. We'll be right back.